11 News is next. A star faded away today. Tejano music queen Selena has been gunned down in Corpus Christi. We'll take you to Lake Jackson where she grew up and left her mark. Live reports from Corpus where the shooting suspect has just been taken into custody. The baseball strike could be ending and Doc's weekend weather next. From KHOU TV Houston, the spirit of Texas, this is 11 News with Steve Smith, Marlene McClinton, Dr. Neil Frank with weather, and Giff Nielsen on sports. 11 News at 10. She was uh, starting to bloom, not only as a person, but as an artist. Those are the words tonight from the father of a superstar singing sensation, overwhelmed by emotion after the death of his daughter. Selena has been shot dead at a Corpus Christi motel. And just minutes ago, a nearly day-long standoff between police and a woman believed to be the shooter ended dramatically in the motel parking lot. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us tonight. Steve Smith has the night off. Selena was fatally wounded today at a day's end just before noon, rushed to a hospital, into an operating room, but she died about an hour later. Now, as we said, police took the suspect into custody just minutes ago, and there's late word she apparently worked at Selena's clothing store. It is a heart-wrenching story for many folks here in the Houston area. We begin extensive coverage tonight with a live report from Ron Trevino, who's on the scene in Corpus. Ron? Marlene, the suspect was taken into custody about half an hour ago. Police had been negotiating with her for about nine hours. She had been threatening to kill herself. Police said they were willing to take as long as it took to end this thing peacefully, and it finally happened around 9.30. There were a lot of cheers from the huge crowd that has gathered here. Let's take a look at what led up to all of this. My earring! Oh, no, it's pretty good. Corpus Christi police converged on this motel around 11.30 this morning and quickly surrounded a red pickup truck. Inside, the woman suspected of shooting to death, Tejano music star Selena Quintanilla Perez, known to all her fans as simply Selena. <music> Selena was shot at this motel, shot in the back and shoulder. Doctors could not save her. As the suspect held police at bay, threatening to kill herself, hundreds of fans gathered at the crime scene. I think for all Corpus Christi, it's a very sad thing for all Texas wine. It's going to be a big disappointment to a lot of people who were following her career and who wanted to see her, you know, become more than she was. I mean, she was a big star already. She was headed for a better direction. As for the suspect, she was said to be a disgruntled employee who worked for Selena and was the former president of Selena's fan club. Selena's father told reporters there was a dispute over discrepancies in some business records the woman was keeping. The woman has been identified as Yolanda Saldabar. She is now in custody. The standoff in Corpus Christi is now over. Marlene? Ron, was she making any demands? And what of this that the family is saying that uh, she lured Selena to the motel? Well, there are allegations out here that the woman may have been embezzling money from the, from the family. The family has a record studio. They also own some boutiques in uh, Corpus Christi and in San Antonio. This woman apparently ran the boutiques, was also the former uh, president of the fan club. The story that we hear is that she allegedly lured Selena here to give her back some of these records, and that's when the violence broke out. All right. Thank you, Ron. Selena was very close to her family. Tonight, relatives are trying to cope with what's happened, waiting with the rest of us for word about what led to the tragedy. Let's go back to Corpus, checking in with 11 News reporter Dan Garcia now. Dan? Marlene, there's a numb disbelief that this 23-year-old could have been killed so senselessly. Family and fans alike are trying to put some reasoning into why something like this could have happened to someone who had given so much to the community, given to the community through her education programs and drug awareness programs. Shock is the only way to describe what family and fans are expressing at the death of Selena Quintanilla. The 23-year-old superstar in Tejano music was loved by millions. Within hours of her death, her father related the events of the afternoon. So I to, to remember her. The way she was another person. We're going to be uh, doing this tribute to Selena. Almost We're immediately, the Hunter radio stations began continuous programming. The Hunter music disc jockeys say this is only one way to pay her a tribute. 
KSAB decided to go ahead with a tribute to uh, Selena Quintanilla only because she's from Corpus Christi or she was raised here in Corpus Christi and will continue uh, throughout the weekend to pay tribute to her by uh, emphasizing on her music. It was also a way for fans to express their sorrow. I'm shocked about her death and everything because she really inspired my life. At Selena's home in the Mata's neighborhood where her family members lived, fans lined the sidewalk. Band members who arrived late in the afternoon were keeping silent about today's tragic events, but people in the neighborhood say she was a regular person, someone everyone loved. I just broke out in tears and I couldn't believe it and I still can't believe it. Uh, I'm still in shock. Marlene, it started raining here about an hour ago and this cold rain really put even more of a damper on everything going on. Again, we just can't express how saddened fans are in this town and really in all of the Tejano music business about this situation. Dan, do you have any idea if there are other siblings in the family, brothers or sisters, or where they might be? Uh, family members, uh, it was interesting. The house that you saw in the story is the one that she lived in. Next to her was uh, the house that her brother lived in, and then two doors down was the house where her parents lived. Yes, there are brothers and sisters, and uh, some of them actually even played in the band. So uh, it, was, it was pretty much a family operation. All right. Thank you, Dan. Okay. Selena won a Grammy last year for Best Mexican American Album. Some say she was on the verge of becoming a megastar in the recording industry. She brought record crowds to the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo the past two years and performed here the past three. Carolyn Campbell joins us live from El Dorado Ranch in Southeast Houston, where Selena's fans held a vigil tonight. Carolyn? Well, Marlene, this has certainly been a difficult night for Selena's family, but it also has been difficult for her fans. And many have gathered here at the El Dorado Club to remember. And this is actually what you see behind me is a second vigil that they've held for her tonight. Fans lit candles as they joined together to say goodbye to their young star. The, the phones are still ringing off the wall, and I mean, we have to do something. We're not down in Corpus. It's really hard. To, everyone's confused. They don't know what to do. It's, it's totally been unbelievable, and uh, this is the best thing we know how to do, you know, at the short notice. They held up hundreds of candles as if they were making a toast to the woman who touched their lives and their hearts with her music. It's still a shock, but to come out here, it kind of helps everybody to relieve their feelings and their, their crying and, you know, to know that, that, that she did try to do everything for us and that no matter what, she'll always be in our lives with her, with her music, with her voice and her name, her name, just everything. She's just great. It was hard to hold back the tears as they watched a video of some of her performances. How you doing, Houston? Many no doubt remembered the first time they saw her three years ago on Tejano Day at the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. She remembered as well in a 1994 interview with 11 News. I think playing at the Astrodome was kind of like a dream come true for all of us because, I mean, this place, you know, like Garth Brooks and George Strait and, you know, Michael Jackson's even played there. And I remember when Michael Jackson had played there, you know, I thought to myself, wow, that'd be really neat if one day, you know, we, it ever gets to the point, you know, where we can play there. It was also a thrill for the organizers of the livestock show and rodeo. For the last two years, she drew the largest rodeo crowds of any star. She meant everything to us, to Tejano Day, because, uh, like I said, you know, she, she had made it a success. Not only made Tejano Day a success, helped make the rodeo a great success. The music stopped today in Corpus Christi, but lives on in recordings which were selling at a fast pace today as fans purchased memories. For the owner of this record store, Mimo Villarreal, increased sales are not good news. Selena was not some distant star to him. She was a family friend. I know this family for many years. I know his father, I know his mother. I know her since he was a little, little baby. I know his sister, his brother, the whole family, because his father used to work for us in a nightclub that we used to have in 1965. And uh, it's a real tragedy for us. Fans who did not know her felt as if they did, and their pain reflected the loss of a good friend. And you know, it just hurts. She's a good person. 
you know, so we came to the store, we bought some cassettes, you know, memories of her. <laughs> What's going through your mind right now? It's just, it's just kind of scary, you know. It's, uh, Other fans it's talked it through on Tejano radio stations, looking to make sense out of the senseless. I don't know. I mean, it's a, it was a shock to all of us. And then, then after a couple of hours going, she passed away? Not Selena. She was Tejano Music's biggest star, but she was also a down-to-earth person, someone with whom her fans could identify. Even though she was wearing, you know, sort of very sexy clothing and singing on stage, people knew that she was kind of a homegirl, someone you might see around the barrio, but, you know, someone that also could be admired for the fact that, you know, she was very close to her family, they were very involved in her business. Now, she, Selena was last here at the El Dorado Club on March 15th, where she helped raise nearly $30,000 for the Go Tejano Committee Scholarship Fund. And that is why the people here say she was so loved, not just for her talent, but for her willingness to share. Marlene, back to you. What a touching outpouring of love. Thank you, Carolyn. You know, lots of people in Lake Jackson are struggling with this death. It's a tiny community southwest of Houston where Selena was born, began her singing career. Jerome Gray has more. That powerful voice, that's what many Lake Jackson residents remember about the little girl who sang at her family's restaurant and grew up to be a singing sensation. Selena lived in this house until she was nine. That's when her family moved to Corpus Christi. The woman who now lives in the house says Selena's family converted the garage into a music room. She was a very nice little girl, very kind, um, quiet. Um, they would sing and practice their music here in the house. Um. Selena went to school here at Roberts Elementary. To understand the impact she had, you need only listen to the young people who grew up with her or the young people who are growing up on Selena's music. Every day we walked home from school together and... Um, Lynn Capel was a classmate of Selena's. That's Lynn on the left, Selena on the just right. The funny thing, I see her as the kid I grew up with, not the star now, so... We were just really good friends. After the third grade, Lynn didn't see her childhood friend until several months ago at a concert. Oh, it was really neat. She let me on the bus and I got to meet her husband and I got to see her mom. And we just talked about all the funny things that we did when we were kids. And, and then there are the young people who listen to Selena's songs. Young people like 12-year-old Ashley Gonzalez. I've been listening to her music for a long time. I've really admired her. And I've always wanted to be like her when I grew up. Cause I you know, someone just point blank in front of everyone just shoot someone you know it's crazy and I hope justice is served. For the young generation in Lake Jackson there is a lot of sadness yeah, over this loss. He's greatly missed here in this community. And fond memories of the hometown girl who made a lot of people proud. She's dead but she's still alive in the music. In Lake Jackson, Jerome Gray, 11 News. She was loved by her fans and had the world at her feet. At 23, Tejano music star Selena is dead. Tonight, her story, Selena, a Texas tragedy. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us. This is a program about Selena Quintanilla, a 23-year-old singer blessed with exceptional talent and beauty that won the hearts of music fans all across the world. But the future that held so much promise was cut short by two bullets this afternoon in Corpus Christi. Selena took the Tejano music world by storm in just a few years, quickly becoming one of the most popular Tejano singers ever. She had broken attendance records at the Houston Rodeo the last three years. Selena won a Grammy last year for Best Tejano Album and was nominated again this year. Her most recent album is number four right now on Billboard's Latin chart. That's this week. Selena, born in Lake Jackson, moved to Corpus with her family when she was a child. We begin tonight's special report with Ron Trevino reporting from the crime scene. Ron? Marlene, the suspect was taken into custody around 9.30 after being holed up in a pickup truck for over nine hours. She is identified as Yolanda Saldivar, reportedly a disgruntled employee who worked for Selena, the former president of her fan club. She allegedly lured Selena here to this hotel to give her some business records. Selena was shot 
here and died at the hospital. And after a long day and long night of negotiating, the suspect is now in custody. There were hundreds of fans who were at the hotel who were watching this unfold. They cheered once the suspect was taken into custody. Of course, Selena has millions of fans, a lot of them here in Corpus Christi, a lot of them in Houston. She accomplished so much in her short life. More on that now from reporter Norm Yule. How you doing, Houston, you doing? Texas? The first time she ever played the Dome was a huge moment for Selena Quintanilla Perez. I think playing at the Astrodome was kind of like a dream come true for all of us because, I mean, this place is, you know, like Garth Brooks and George Strait and, you know, Michael Jackson's even played there. And I remember when Michael Jackson had played there, you know, I thought to myself, wow, that'd be really neat if one day, you know, we, it ever gets to the point, you know, where we can play there. Not only would she play there, she would return twice more, drawing the rodeo's biggest crowds. It was a long way to the dome from Lake Jackson, where six-year-old Selena sang to the customers in her father's restaurant. Her destiny and that of her family was captured on this home video when Selena was just 10. Houston's economy was about to hit the skids, and when the oil business went bust, so did her father's restaurant. The family was left with nothing. Nothing but talent, that is. Selena's father, Abraham, who led a band called Dinos in the 50s, formed a new band with Selena, her brother, and sister. That band would go on to be called Selena y los Dinos. She would become EMI Records' top-selling Latino artist. She would win a Grammy and be named Tejano Music's Female Entertainer of the Year. A lot of accomplishments for someone just 23 years old, but now, sadly, they are lifetime achievements. Some believe the best was yet to come as Selena prepared to cross over to mainstream pop music with an English album. Houston Post music critic Claudia Perry believes she could have been one of the biggest mainstream recording stars ever. She was already Tejano Music's brightest star, but this star was not so distant that her fans felt her unreachable. She was very much one of the someone that people could identify with that even though she was wearing you know sort of very sexy clothing and singing on stage people knew that she was kind of a homegirl someone you might see around the barrio but you know someone that also could be admired for the fact that you know she was very close to her family they were very involved in her business so you must be pretty excited about everything that's being done here huh? yeah it's um it's taking shape this is just selena was the family business in 1994, her parents, siblings, aunts and uncles turned a Corpus Christi auto body shop into her headquarters. This is going to be my dance studio. I've always wanted one. I always wanted to be a ballerina, too. In this building, her father would manage the careers of musicians, including Selena, while other family members produced promotional t-shirts and clothing for Selena's salon and boutique. I'm a firm believer that the Hispanic families are real tight. They seem to stick together, believe in real family uh, unity. Now her family is sticking together through the very worst of times. Though Selena made Corpus Christi her base of operations, Houston always held a special place in her heart. Likewise, many Houstonians had a special place in their hearts for her, as evidenced when she was presented the key to the city. This is how many fans will remember her. And no matter how old they get, Selena will always be 23. Norm Ewell, 11 News. I was lucky enough last year to shoot an interview with Selena. I spent a whole day with her and her family. She will be missed by so many people. But the story tonight in Corpus Christi, the suspect has finally been arrested. Marlene? Ron, you did spend a lot of time, especially I believe it was for her first Sunday piece that you did. She spoke about family unity and the uh, Latino family. Can you expound on that? Well, what she meant by that was her entire family was involved in her singing operation. They had uh, studios here. She was also involved with the boutique shop. And everybody from uncles to her parents, uh, everybody had a role in these operations. All right. Thank you, Ron. 
Well, a great deal of sadness over Selena's death in the town of Lake Jackson, just southwest of Houston, where Selena was born and began her singing career. Selena's family lived in a house in Lake Jackson until she was about nine. It was that house. Some of the people who live here have found really memories of the little girl with the powerful voice. Others say she was a special kind of singer who will truly be missed. Hispanic community and to the... I was shocked enough to find out she had become a big star and then to hear this on TV. Just, it's a shame. She started off, started off here and she always tried to help the youth and she knew that she was a role model and she was just proper. She, she always seemed happy. Though Selena's family moved from Lake Jackson when she was very young, she often went back to visit relatives and perform in the area. And just as you heard, for a lot of young people, Selena was a star they loved to listen to and admire. For others, she was even a role model, a youthful promise of the kind of success possible with talent. Tonight, Nancy Holland joins us live from the YMCA on the South Loop, where young people are talking about the lady they will miss. Nancy? Marlene, role models are really important, and you can find a lot of them here at the YMCA on a Friday night. This is a place where all these kids have come. They are playing sports here tonight. They are getting together, and they are trying to bring down barriers. And bringing down barriers is the same kind of thing that music can do. She was like the biggest thing in music right now. Everybody loved her. I like dancing her kind of music. She had so much she could do. She was a very talented person. Young people listened and knew her through her music. And some who play music knew her personally. One young Channel View musician was just 22 when he met Selena and suddenly got a break he'd never dreamed of. The first day I went down there, we were just kicking out ideas. And then by the late evening hours, you know, as some musicians like to work late, we had an idea. The next day, we just, we, we finished it up. And then and you ended up on her album. And ended up on her album. It gave him a taste of what was possible. And he says she was always willing to work with people who were unknown. She was a star in the sense of what she did, you know, she was very good at. But as far as the attitude didn't come with that, you know, with her. Like, when I was down there, she was super nice. She took me to eat, you know, she bought me a little gift. Uh, she, was, she was just down to earth. In a business that often has horror stories about its stars, her image was clean. And what is saddest to many is the potential that will never be. I think this was an individual that wasn't involved in drugs was involved in a tragic shooting. Uh, someone robbed very, you know, at a young age. I, the only comparison I had was maybe even to John Lennon. Because to the Hispanic community, she was one of the few entertainers that had achieved that level of success. She's so beautiful. Which leaves 13-year-old Amanda Corral with her pictures and her dreams. I just like to say that everybody should remember her in their heart. And she is gone, but not forgotten. Marlene, like a lot of other people you've heard from tonight, the kids here say they find it really difficult to believe that something like this has happened. All right. Thank you, Nancy. Still to come, Selena was a talented singer, as we've heard and seen. She was also an actress. We'll learn more about her music and what she was planning now that her career was beginning to blossom. Stay with us. A superstar on the rise, but most importantly, a wonderful human being. That's how singer Selena Quintanilla Perez is being remembered by many tonight. Insiders say the 23-year-old star was just hitting her stride, ready to cross over from the popular Tejano sound to the mainstream music. Joining us now with more on her ambitions and dreams is 11 News reporter Dan Garcia, who is coming to us live from Corpus Christi. Dan? Marlene, this young lady and her entire family had developed an incredible sense for business. All of their concerns from the band and music act all the way to the music uh, recording studio that they had and even the boutiques that that opened both here and in San Antonio uh, were a closely held family operation. How you doing, Houston, Hi, Texas? At the young age of 23, Selena Quintanilla was not only a Tejano music star, but also an industry within herself.
crown jewel in that industry was, of course, her music. She was known in the U.S. to hunt a music business, mostly in states along the border. She was possibly an even bigger star in Mexico and Central and South America. But she was in the process of getting bigger. Selena was the equivalent to, I'd say, like a Madonna for the Hispanics uh, community uh, in, in many states. And, and uh, I tell you, she was... Uh, headed to become a super superstar, I mean a gigantic star. Uh, apparently she had an English CD coming out that was in the can, already recorded, The capital EMI uh, was getting ready to, to release. In other areas, she had branched out to include this clothing boutique in Corpus Christi. It's one of two stores that she owns. Her trademark high boots and bustiers were marketed through the stores to fans anxious to imitate the star. By Friday night, though, the stores were closed. She really inspired my life. I mean, that someone like her would come and sing for us. But one industry she prided herself most on were the trips she made to schools to encourage kids to stay in and get their diplomas. And close behind, her urging for those same kids to stay off of drugs. Marlene, as you might expect, all of this has now been put on hold, and all of the people who work in all of those different operations are probably wondering what's going to happen next. All right. Of course they are. Thank you, Dan. Still to come, Selena was a major figure in the increasingly popular Tejano sound. We'll examine the music, her influence, which helped bring it notoriety and respect. Stay with us. Musicians who knew and worked with Selena are also feeling a tremendous loss. A vigil is underway tonight at a nightclub the star often visited when she was in town. Porter Carolyn Campbell standing by live at the El Dorado Ranch in southeast Houston. Carolyn? Marlene, her fans say that she cannot be replaced, and they are here tonight to say goodbye and to remember their Selena. Fans packed one of the hottest Tejano clubs in Houston to say goodbye to the young woman who had captured their hearts. I mean, we have to do something. We're not down in Corpus. It's really hard. To, everyone's confused. They don't know what to do. It's, it's totally been unbelievable. And uh, this is the best thing we know how to do, you know, at the short notice. They lit candles and then raised them in honor of their fallen star, 23-year-old Selena. It's still a shock, but to come out here, it kind of helps everybody to relieve their feelings and their, their crying and, you know, to know that, that, that she did try to do everything for us and that no matter what, she'll always be in our lives with her, with her music, with her voice, and her name, her name, just everything. She's just great. It is it's very difficult. Uh, we lost something that was very dear to our hearts. Sancho Pueblo Tejanos, uh, she was loved everywhere. And we lost something that, that cannot be replaced. Selena's last performance in Houston was on this stage, where her fans now dance to the Tejano music she helped to make so famous. Now Marlene, Selena was supposed to return to this club to perform again in May, but she was last here in March where she performed to help raise money for the Go Tejano Committee Scholarship Fund, and she helped to raise nearly $30,000, and her fans say this is an unusual because she believed in helping to give back to her community. And now the owner of the club says they're going to try to at least give back to her family. They're going to be collecting cards, telegrams, and flowers that they will send to Selena's family in Corpus Christi. Back to you. All right, Carolyn, we're going to try to get some more information. Thank you. Selena did for Tejano Music what Elvis and the Beatles did for rock and roll. Tejano, Tejano Music has traditionally been popular among Mexican-Americans. Selena and groups like hers brought new vigor, especially among the young. To get a better feel for that and what Tejano music is all about, let's go live to our newsroom at Bo Corona, a disc jockey at Super Tejano 108. Good evening, Bo. Good evening, Marlene. Bo, help us understand. We've been talking about Tejano music, Tejano music. There's a lot of people who don't exactly know what the, what the appeal is and, and why it is so popular. Uh, Selena was in the forefront. Uh, uh, Tejano is a lot of polkas, music, funky beat that Selena would give us all the time. Uh, she's a big role model. And, of course, uh, you know, we had two big sold-out shows with Selena, and uh, it's just been amazing. And, and it's still, to this day, and these couple of hours, it's like, is this really happening? 
Yeah, it is. And uh, being a big uh, Tejano radio station and being in a Tejano market like uh, Houston, uh, it's a very big impact, not just here in Texas, but in, in Mexico, where Selena would always go, and in California, up uh, north in uh, New York. Uh, so it's been very amazing. Does it appeal to any, generally, to any certain group? You can always see that there were lots of people who obviously oh. enjoyed it. Oh, Marlene, just, uh, from little kids that are about two years old, sing Selena songs, to uh, my age, that I'm 28, to grandma and grandpa. Uh, it ranges from, say, one-year-old to 65, 70, 85 years old. But what was she singing about? If you don't speak, you know, Spanish, what was she, what was she talking about? Uh, amor, lots of love, uh, a lot of relationships, uh, missing my baby, which she did in English. Uh, just very versatile, man. That's what Selena was, Marlene. Very, uh, from one... Uh, it's just um, amazing. I'm, I'm still blown away that she's not here. That she, we're not going to speak to her tomorrow. I just talked to her about two weeks ago, talking about that she was going to break into top 40. She was doing an English album, ready to explode in the general market. That was the next step that Selena was going to do for the Tejanos, and uh, it's not going to happen. Well, is there anybody coming behind her? Do you see any other rising star? I mean, you can never replace her, but is there somebody coming up? Sel uh, Selena was one of a kind. Okay. She is numero uno, and she was just far uh, ahead of everybody else. Well, tell me, as we wind this down, was it the voice? Was it the performance? Was it the music itself? What was it that distinguished her? 23 years old, she yeah. jetted up like a rocket. She was just the whole package. Uh, yeah. When Selena would walk in the room, you would look around and go, here comes Selena, watch Watch out. Stand back, everybody. She's up on stage, and she's going to do her thing. All right. I, I know you get calls at, at the radio station, yeah. and, uh, and I, I suppose over the weekend. Are you doing anything special over the weekend? See, si, este, what we're doing, we've, we're getting about... 500 phone calls every 30 minutes. Uh, today at 5 o'clock, we had dead air. We, we didn't talk for a couple of seconds. And we're playing Selena all weekend long on Super Tejano 108, along with our sister station, Kakukuka. And uh, we have listeners on the air asking her, what, you know, what, what does Selena mean to you? And uh, we just let the listeners talk and play Selena from uh, all this weekend, from uh, Friday, Friday afternoon until Sunday tonight, at midnight. All right, a horrible day for us all. Let's, uh, let's just try to get through the weekend with it. Thanks, Thank you very much, Bo. Thank you. Selena touched a lot of lives on her way to stardom. Up next, a former disc jockey talks about one of Selena's first public interviews. When Selena was only 13 years old, she gave one of her first radio interviews, and it went to a man who now works right here in Houston. As a rising star, she had a lot of ambition. Before she became queen of Tejano music, Selena, like most artists, was an aspiring bundle of talent. Al Padron, a producer and writer at the local Univision affiliate, was a DJ at a Corpus Christi Tejano radio station. He says he was doing his regular afternoon show when a little girl named Selena Quintanilla walked into his studio. She discussed uh, her, her plans for the future, her ambitions. Uh, she had uh, a lot of people that she looked up to in the Tejano music world. And she aspired to, to do something big and do, do good things for her family and, and her friends. Padron was also among the first to play this rising star's music. He says he was hooked on her talent from the very start. Just ahead, a final tribute to Selena and her music. And that brings us to the end of our special report tonight. 23-year-old Selena Quintanilla Perez. Beautiful, talented, special, but she is gone tonight. We leave you with a look at what Selena brought into our lives. Exuberance, energy, entertainment. She left a part of herself in the song she recorded. Good night. How you doing, Houston, you doing? Texas? <laughs>
I think playing at the Astrodome was kind of like a dream come true for all of us because, I mean, this place is, you know, like Garth Brooks and George Strait and, you know, Michael Jackson's even played there. And I remember when Michael Jackson had played there, you know, I thought to myself, wow, that'd be really neat if one day, you know, it ever gets to the point, you know, where we can play there. En el fondo de mi alma, que un día te quedarás tú conmigo. Y aún guardaba una ilusión que alimentaba el corazón. Mi corazón que hoy tiene que verte como solo amigo. Y aunque viví enamorada y totalmente equivocada, no me importa. 